Six and zero oh or five and one? Now that is the question for James Madison. They say history repeats itself, but JMU is fighting to prove that phrase wrong. And today the Orioles made their first postseason appearance since 2016, hosting the Rangers in Game One of the ALDS. The hype could not be higher right now for JMU football as the Dukes gear up to host ESPN College Game Day. 30 years ago, Bill Clinton was sworn into office, Beanie Babies hit the market, and Michael Jordan walked away from basketball. And the first college game day was aired on ESPN. Now, 30 years later, some things change, some things stay the same, and we're here in Harrisonburg for the 30th anniversary of this show as James Madison takes on App State. Played Peyton Stearns in junior tennis. No way. It was a very cool experience because I knew when I stepped out on the court with her, her forehand was huge, serp was huge, and so even though that we were juniors and we were young, you saw the potential and I didn't have those weapons. If there was one word that you would use to describe yourself as a head coach, what would you say? I, I hope selflessness. Now the commander season has had high hopes after the team started 2-0 and this fall, but after a 37-3 loss to the Bills in week three, some fans were wondering how the team would respond this Sunday. Both teams have dropped four games so far in this 2023 campaign, and the word of tonight is youth. We have a sophomore quarterback squaring off against a freshman quarterback. In fact, Coco Goff actually wasn't sure where her dad was after the match. So wow. we have Coco Goff looking in a stadium of 20,000 people. Over 20,000 people showed up tonight to watch this final, and she wasn't sure where her dad was. It was a beautiful sunset, but the art was coming from the cleats of Ellie Johnson, who keeps shooting. 80th minute, that's in. The Dukes win their first invitational of the season with a 3-0 victory over UNCG. Third quarter now tied at 10. Taylor Heineke finds John Bates for 16 yards. The Commanders regain the lead, 16-10. to Fourth quarter now, 19-13 Commanders. Marcus Mariota back to pass, looking for a receiver, but not so fast. Montez Sweat comes in with the sack. One more chance to score and maybe push this game to overtime. One minute left, Mariota's pass is deflected and intercepted by Kendall Fuller in the end zone. Kyrgios was averaging 24 aces per match heading into this final, and the aces kept coming. The Australian takes the first set 6-4 with a big serve down the tee. But Djokovic has a different level of fitness than the rest of the world. Early in the second, he starts wearing down Kyrgios, who uses the changeover to complain of a disruptive fan who is acting out. When I started at the station back in 2021, women's sports received only 4% of media coverage. And tonight, I'm happy to report that women's sports coverage has grown to 14% over the past three years, and I'm honored to be a small part of that change with our Women in Sports series. Do the job so well that it's like, yo, I don't, she's a woman, but we need her. You know, that's the kind of the mentality that I want to have. Happy birthday to you. This season, Jennifer King became the first black female full-time coach in the NFL. King was a two-sport athlete at Guilford College and spent 12 seasons competing in women's professional football leagues, where she was a seven-time All-American as both a quarterback and a running back. King joined the Commanders after coaching stints at Dartmouth College and the Carolina Panthers. Walking into the Commanders, did you feel like as a woman, were you seen any differently? Uh, no. You know, I had the, the privilege to be with Coach Rivera in Carolina twice, so I kind of knew how he ran things, and a lot of the guys here were also there, so they knew me as well, so it wasn't like I was meeting a bunch of strangers. People often say that women, at least in, in these male-dominated fields, have to be twice as good to be treated equally. And, and have you found, at least in the coaching space, that that's true? Yeah, I mean, that's something that I grew up with. You know, being just a black female, you kind of had that mentality that you had to be twice as good. But I think, you know, anytime you see someone who's doing something pretty cool or kind of special, I mean, they have to be good just to be there. Are you a sneakerhead, too? I'm a big sneakerhead. Favorite shoes? Do you have a pair? I have some Trophy Room Jordan ones. So I think those are probably my most coveted shoes. So still in the box. I, I, I'm obviously not going to wear them. I just have them. I like to have them. Would you ever wear them? I don't plan on it. That's kind of my break glass in case of emergency if I need to sell them for something. <laughs> Shenandoah junior Haley Van Voorhees is fresh off a historic week as a safety on the Shenandoah football team. Earlier today, Van Voorhees joined me in studio to discuss her historic career on the field. That's the type of stuff I work for and the stuff I dream about every single day. And to be able to make an impact on the women everywhere is just an amazing thing. And I'm excited that I could, you know, do my thing and also make an impact. This fall, Shenandoah junior Haley Van Voorhees made history when she became the first woman to play in an NCAA football game in a position other than kicker. Do you ever feel fear out there? I don't feel fear at all. I'm more like a fearful person. I don't. 
people ask me, are you scared to get hit? Like, no, because I'm the one hitting. They should be scared of me. How did you stay motivated for those two years when you weren't playing? Uh, it was hard. I'm not even going to lie. It was, it was tough because, you know, you see people progressing and getting better and you don't see that like light at the end of the tunnel, but it's about pushing forward regardless and knowing that, you know, your time will come and just staying patient is key, I think, in anything. As soon as that play happened, everyone started talking on social media. How do you quiet that noise? People are going to always have opinions about you all the time. You just can't, I mean, if you don't take advice from somebody, you don't, you don't take opinions from them that are negative, and that's kind of my view toward it. What would you say to young girls who were watching you play that day? Nothing's impossible. You know, you can make it possible and change people's mindsets toward whatever it is, but it's gonna take a fight. You gotta be willing to work every day. You gotta have the discipline and like the courage to do it because you're gonna hate it as much as you love it of whatever your dream is because it's just gonna take that much work. I blocked a lot of it out. I just let it go in one ear and out the other because it was such a harsh experience. I didn't really want to have to relive that. Ten years later, former Dance Mom star Kendall Vertez is still on the move as a junior on the JMU dance team. This fall, she reunited with some of the cast members to film a reunion that will air in 2024. You took five years off from dancing after Dance Moms. I did. I danced my entire life. I started when I was two years old and I had a very interesting childhood. I was dancing 24-7 for eight years straight, and it was time for me to just take a little break, kind of be back home with my family. How did you find your identity beyond dance during those five years? I feel like just being home and having to kind of live two lives, I felt like Hannah Montana for a second. I was this reality dance star, but then I was back home in Pittsburgh, kind of living a normal life, trying to create a friend group. I didn't have many friends because I was constantly traveling with the same girls. I started to realize, oh, I actually like volleyball. Like, this is actually pretty fun to hit a ball in someone's face. You know what I mean? Sophie Davis has done that endless times over the past four seasons for the Dukes, notching her 1,000th career kill earlier this month. In your first season in the Sunbelt Conference, Sunbelt regular season and postseason champs, and of course you were named the Sunbelt Defensive Player of the Year. How magical was that? Um, it's a dream come true because I definitely wanted to win a ring at JMU, and I wanted to feel like we accomplished something. I just wanted to leave something here and like, see, come, when I come back, I wanted to see, you know, my team on the wall. What do you think about body image and volleyball? Because obviously your uniforms are pretty revealing. And mm -hmm. what is that like to play in that and have confidence in that? I don't usually wear, like I usually, I like big clothing. And so, you know, it's just something I've just had to embody. And my confidence as in myself as a player kind of overrules, you know, what I wear. So yeah, you just gotta play, <laughs> you know?